Well, the good news is if you're feeling stressed out at work, you're not alone. The bad news is um, executives probably aren't even aware of it. And if they are, they actually think things are getting better. So there's that. Hey folks, Mark here from The Rational Workforce. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, I hope you're having a great week so far. And, you know, there was just some news that broke uh, based on a Deloitte study about the widening disconnect between what's really going on in the workplace, specifically in kind of the emotional, mental well-being of employees and the perceptions of that amongst the executive team. So let's let's dig in real quick. So uh, this is from Unleash, which is a great uh, publication, digital publication that covers the HR and HR technology sector. And the, the title is Employers are Asleep at the Wellbeing Wheel. Really good title too, by the way. All right. So half of all employees always or often feel exhausted and stressed according to Deloitte's 2023 Wellbeing at Work study. Not terribly surprising there. You're probably feeling this way. If not, you've got folks in and around your orbit that are having some of these challenges and like things just feel generally a little heavier these days, don't, don't they? So no surprise that that's trickling out into the workforce, but let's take a look at a little bit of a deeper dive behind the numbers. These well-being challenges are directly linked to their jobs. Deloitte survey observed that 40% of workers see their jobs as having a negative effect on their mental state and one in three report that their job is damaging to their physical health. It continues. Although leaders know that they are responsible for employee well-being, 72% of the executives surveyed are in favor of their bonuses being tied to the organization's well-being performance, but they underestimate the extent to which employees are still struggling with their health and well-being. So there's a lot of great data points to unpack within this particular survey and within this article. And we'll, we'll get into it a little bit more. But <clears throat> I called out this screenshot a little bigger just so we could we could see it easier. But, you know, most employees say their health worsened or stayed the same last year, but more than three out of four executives believe their workforce health improved. So look at these questions. The employee perspective on how their well-being changed, and it covers physical, mental, financial, and social. The green represents perceptions that it's improved. White is no change. Black is worsened. Look at the disconnect between employees on the left and C-suite executives on the right. So there isn't a single well-being measure that the C-suite rated below 77, 76%, right? So, you know, C plus to low Bs across the board as far as they're concerned. But take a look at the employees who feel like their well-being has improved in these areas, or even worse, the the their well-being has worsened, particularly on the financial front, right? So that's the, probably more of an artifact of the economy than anything else. But this is like, this isn't just we're off by a couple of degrees. There's a huge gap between leadership and employees. All right, let's go back and look at some of those stats now. So Deloitte's research found that 60% of employees and three in four executives are seriously considering quitting in search of a job with better well-being alternatives. And the data further suggests that workers value their well-being over their careers as 84% report prioritizing their well-being and 74% put wellness ahead of career advancement. And let's, let's stop there and unpack this a little bit too. There's a difference between weighing the, do I want to take that next step up on the career ladder versus the stress it'll bring me relative to the money I'll bring in, right? Like that's a, a very valid concern. But in a bigger picture world, you need to understand that people sometimes, no matter how much they feel that might hurt their well-being, are in a financial situation where they don't have a choice, right? You always have a choice, but I'm going to put myself out there as an example, right? I'm early 50s. Two kids in college, one in high school, it's going to be coming up. So, you know, I've been in situations before as I was looking at my kids growing older and getting into school. I didn't have the luxury of saying, yeah, you know what? I'll just hang back and take less salary. So 
I can feel better. I can keep my mental well-being. And I discounted how important mental well-being is and how it impacts everything else. But the realities and the economies of the world are such that that's not necessarily always a choice. And there are, are surveys and articles and publications that tee it up as such. And again, like everyone's got a choice, right? You can you can always pick and prioritize different things in life. But you look at the economy right now, you look at inflation right now, you look at the cost of everything from housing to clothing to food. I, I, I think it's tough to say no to those jumps up if you're in a position where other people are depending on you for your livelihood. So we have to acknowledge that. We have to acknowledge that and we have to think our way through it. And I want to cover another piece from this article that I think is important to note too. So uh, how do we go about fixing it? How do you go about closing that disconnect? Um, I want to scroll down to a point where they talk about managers. And here we go. Um, although employees and managers agree that managers are at least partly responsible for employee well-being, just 54% of managers check in with their employees to see how they're doing. Less than half ensure that their workloads are reasonable. 47% make sure they take breaks and 38% encourage employees to use companies well-being programs. And worst of all, just 26% of managers lead team well-being activities. So again, more stats, man, we could spend an hour on this, these studies, but it's really important to understand how critical managers are in that link. And again, like I've led large teams, I've led small teams, and there are absolutely times where I've been parts of companies where the growth path was through the roof, where, you know, I get so wrapped up in my work that sometimes I was not as attentive to those needs of my teammates should have been, right? I really should have been dialed into that stuff. Now, I was blessed enough that I had people that would come to me and raise a flag and say, Mark, I'm drowning here. Mark, I need help. Mark, there's a challenge. And then I could respond to it. And I always felt a little ashamed that I didn't catch that sooner. But the only reason, the only way I was able to have that brought to my attention is because I invested time in people and we built a relationship where they felt comfortable coming to me about that sort of stuff. And that's so important. So if you're an employee and you're in this situation, I highly encourage you to advocate for yourself, to, to raise a flag respectfully, not publicly, not screaming and pounding the table. Book that conversation with your manager. Have that discussion. Let them know what's going on. Then and only then do you understand how much your company prioritizes your well-being. Then and only then do you understand, is it something that they really stand behind or is it words they like to put on a website so they can attract more people uh, to come to the, the business, but they don't necessarily want to follow through on it. It's such a vital litmus test for you to give as an employee. And as a manager, make sure you're doing those check-ins, making sure that you're having the skip level meetings of your senior manager You've got to keep your finger on the pulse of how your team is feeling. And yes, it is incumbent upon you as a manager to try and address those challenges. Because if you don't, attrition is going to go through the roof. Downstream in your career, you're not going to have folks who want to come, come and work with you again. I've been so blessed over my career that I've had folks that have worked with me at two, three different companies. You're only able to do that if you establish bonds, if you establish friendships, and you care about more than just the output that they're creating for the company. You've got to care about them as a person. So we're going to close out today. I just think it's really important to understand that and to know those statistics. And as an employer and as a manager, please pay attention to this stuff and make sure you're doing what it takes to keep your teams happy. With that, uh, I want to thank you for tuning in. I really hope you like the channel. We'd love to see it grow a little bit faster. So make sure that you ring the bell, click subscribe, click like, do all the things and make sure that you're, you're doing your part to help us grow. If you don't like what you're seeing, thanks for hanging in this long. Let us know more of what you'd like to see in the comments below. And I hope you have an amazing day. Don't be too stressed out. We'll talk to you later. Bye.